hear me, okay, if you could just write in the chat box below and uh, let me know that you can hear and see me, okay, that would be brilliant. Brilliant. Right. Uh, thank you for attending our webinar on the Foundation Certificate Synoptic. Um, the Synoptic exams are a new addition to AAT. So these are something that only for AQ 2016. And what they are is an exam that will test you on pretty much anything from the entire level, uh, as, as you'll see. Um, the reason why they've been brought in is, I mean, they are, they are a good exam. We'll go through what's in the exam. But the reason why is for apprenticeships, uh, the new funding rules means there's got to be an overall summative assessment that tests everything that you've learned. So apprenticeships are a big, big thing for AAT. So they brought this in to make sure that their qualifications were uh, suitable for apprenticeships. So we're going to have a look at the foundation certificate synoptic. We're not going to cover AQ20 the 16 as a whole, but specifically the synoptic exam. So, as you see, these this is how the level two financial certificate in accounting is structured. So you've got the individual units. So you've got bookkeeping transactions, which is a new name for processing bookkeeping transactions, bookkeeping controls, elements of costing, working effectively in finance and using accounting software. So the same five units we had on AQ 2013. The difference being that booking transactions has its own exam, just like it did before, same with booking controls and elements of costing. Working effectively doesn't. So working effectively does not have its own standalone exam. So this is assessed in the synoptic exam. So You'll study bookkeeping transactions, you'll sit that exam, you'll pass it, hopefully, and move on. Same with bookkeeping controls and elements of costing. Then you'll come to the synoptic exam, and anything that's been in bookkeeping transactions, bookkeeping controls, elements of costing, will also, or could also, be in the synoptic exam, as well as all the material for working effectively. So it's not as flexible as it used to be. So you would need to have studied the first three core units before you start studying working effectively, and then you'd sit the synoptic. Now, using accounting software is very standalone. So it doesn't appear in the synoptic exam. It has its own standalone exam, and you, it, you just sit that. So the, the, the way I strongly suggest you study is you do the three mandatory units that have their own exam, then work study working effectively, then sit the synoptic exam, and then move on to using accounting software right at the end. You could technically sit using accounting software before you started your studies with bookkeeping transactions, but I think bookkeeping transactions gives you an overview of double entry bookkeeping, which is going to help you in using accounting software. So I would strongly recommend you leave accounting software towards the end. Now, you can see here, here the you get an overall assessment overall grade of the level which we'll come to but you can see the synoptic exam is worth 30 percent of the overall grade it's a significant um part of your overall grade so you want to make sure you get a very very good mark on that so that's how the level uh, level well we don't say level two anymore it's the foundation certificate in accounting uh, it's structured so the synoptic exam, you see it working effectively, is only assessed in the um, synoptic assessment, whereas the, these three here have their own individual um, exams. Computerised accounting is not part of the synoptic. Now, the synoptic exam is a two hour exam. So it, it, it's very much like the other exams at level two, it's a two hour exam. At the later levels, the synoptic exams are three, but at the foundation certificate, it's only two. Now, very differently to the mandatory units is there are some written questions in the synoptic exam, which students don't like. And that means that they're not marked automatically like, uh, say, bookkeeping controls is, where you'll go to the exam, sit it, and then someone will come in and tell you um, 
Uh, has someone lost me? Can everyone else see me? Are you okay, Grizel? Right, well, I'll wait till Grizel comes back to me. Um, but the point I'm trying to say, uh, uh, make is there are written questions which are marked by a human. Therefore, it's going to take six weeks for you to get your results. They're marked by AAT. It's not like the old projects on AQ2013 where they're marked by your training provider who could, could mark it um, sooner. It will be six weeks before you get your results for the synoptic exam. Now, crucially, we'll come to grading. The competency level is still 70%. That hasn't changed. The AT wants to stress that. If you are competent on AQ 2016, you are just as competent as you were on AQ 2013. That has not changed. The pass mark is 70%. The only difference is that it's, the synoptic will take six weeks to get your results. Also, as a side note, the computerized accounts unit now is actually marked by AAT rather than a training provider. So again, you're going to have to wait six weeks for that result. Again, your training provider cannot get you a new, uh, sorry, a, a provisional pass uh, sooner. So what kind of things have been tested? What it's meant to be is meant to be very similar to what you do in the workplace. It is apparently what employers are looking for. So rather than thinking, right, we're going to learn everything about bookkeeper transactions, we pass the exam, right, let's forget it, move on to bookkeeper controls, pass the exam, forget it. It's going to be like a scenario based thing. And it's more about advisory and communication and um, testing some of the sorts of softer skills. Um, so things like ethics or ethical behavior and sort of managing your workload, managing your time. And, and it's not just learning about policies and procedures, it's making recommendations. So what it'll be, there'll be a scenario. So it's you are Joe Bloggs, you're the bookkeeper for Tom Smith Limited, who are VAT registered and they um, have 20 staff in various offices. You've got to come up with or uh, recommend policy procedures that are suitable for Tom Smith Limited, not just here's a policy on health and safety, here's a policy on data protection. It needs to be specific to the scenario. You'll also be asked to explain things to people who are not accountants. So you'll have to explain things to people who don't know all the terminology. So you've got to communicate effectively. Um, again, it's going to bring in the mandatory units, so you will be asked to you know, amend accounting records. Um, obviously, when it comes to working effectively, there's things about sustainability in there. So it's not just a case of learning about sustainability. It's analysing the scenario and making recommendations based on that scenario as to what would be a suitable sustainable project for them. So if it's a very small company, you want to be doing something that is feasible, not, um, for example, giving a million pounds to a wetland scheme. That's not going to be feasible for a small company, but um, putting in a um, suitable project like, 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 like recycling bins. No. In any task, you're going to get a combination of written questions and numerical questions. So there'll be, like, there'll be things on, um, for example, like calculate the cost of different items for production. Basically, that's putting numbers in, just like you do on elements of costing. So there is no analysis, there's no recommendations. It's just your answer was five, model answers four, your answer is wrong. Um, but each question will have elements of um, written questions and numerical questions in. So it, it, it's all mixed up. And then obviously there's sort of soft skills of team uh, time management and team management. So it, you know, it, it's very mixed up. It's very uh, looking at things as, as a whole and looking at specifically what will help this business here. Not will help a uh, certain, you know, what will help businesses, what will help that business there that you've been given in the scenario. Um, you don't need this exam for level three and four. It's the level, uh, sorry, it's the foundation level. 
Um, but you won't get the result. You won't get the foundation certificate unless you sit this exam. It will prepare you for level three synoptic, and especially it will prepare you for level four or the professional level as it's known now, because every professional level or level four exam has written questions in. So it normally what happens is on AQ twenty thirteen you do numerical questions for level two, level three, then you come to level four, you've got written questions and students struggle. Whereas now we are embedding written questions in at every level. So you won't get that big shock at level four when you're asked to do written questions. And it will help you for things like SEMA, because SEMA have a strategic case study. It's a really, really, really hard exam. Uh, and that's a case study just like this. So it's not learning about um, one sort of strand of accountancy. It's looking at everything and the whole picture specifically to that case study. This has been brought in for the AQ 2016 qualification because it is part of the um, requirements of apprenticeships and to be on the national um, occupational skills uh, qualification register. It, it, it's, it's, a, it's a requirement for AAT to have an exam that can test everything. So that's why they brought it in. I mean, they, they say it is what employers are looking for. I'd, I'd agree because um, it, it, it keeps you up, your skills up to date because you've got to cap everything to hand and it stops you looking at very things in a very discreet, insular way, you're looking at the bigger picture. And, you, you know, you're looking at elements of costing and booking transactions and looking at sort of any interactions between them. So it, it's a requirement on AQ 2016. It's not a requirement on AQ 2013. So what's the is the exam going to be like? Good question. The exam could be like anything. The feedback we're getting is th the exams are very, very different or can be different from the AAT mock. So there is no style of question. So example on bookkeeping, sorry, on um, booking transactions, task one of the exam will be entering books from the day books into the main ledger. In the synoptic, it might be, it might not be. It might be in task one, it might be in task uh, seven. It might be, um, you know, tested as a numerical question, it might be tested as a written question. Anything could be tested and it could be tested in, in a variety of ways. So we might test um, whether you know about fixed overheads, semi-variables, uh, so, sorry, um, semi-variable costs or variable costs. We could test it with a numerical question um, or we, you could test it uh, as a written question. You've got to explain it to someone. If you're not going into level three, you, you you still need to do it to complete the foundation certificate. It is a requirement of the foundation certificate. You wouldn't get the certificate unless you sat this exam. You couldn't. You won't. You, you you could you could not you could avoid the exam, but you won't get a certificate. You'd be half foundation qualified. Um. I mean, just expect the unexpected is what we advise so you might have small really small topics that are tested in a big way or you know big topics that you think that's definitely going to come up that maybe you don't even come up or it's a very uh you know small question and the main thing is it, you know we're looking for you to apply the knowledge that you've learned in the context of the scenario not just knock out written uh, numerical questions like you have done in the previous exams and it's an integrated approach. So you've got seven tasks. It could be you've got elements of costing at the beginning, a bit of ethics, and then you're doing um, some bookkeeping controls at the end of task one. You know, it could be anything, in any combination. So you don't expect that you do the AAT sample assessment and that's what the exam's going to be like and it's going to be that elder because it isn't. You really, really got to um, be sure that you are well prepared because it can it's very very variable so that's the format of the assessment um now i mentioned grading before so the pass mark is still 70 percent. that has not changed um however now on aq 2016 if you get above 80 percent, you'll get a merit and you'll get if you're above 90 you'll get a distinction now that's based on the overall grade for the level so if you wanted to get a distinction and you found that bookkeeping from Zoles let you down, you can um, resit it and get a higher mark. If you resit it and get a lower mark, the higher mark will still count. If you resit it and fail, it won't matter. Um, but it, your highest mark will count towards the overall grade. 
Um, the AAT have two sample assessments on their uh, on my AAT. Um, lots of training providers have written sample assessments. Um, maybe you want to contact your training provider if you have one, and um, you know make sure you do as many sample assessments as they've got. Um, it, you can never do too many questions. So the exam. So you've got seven questions, and it's all based on one scenario. So every question will relate to uh, that one scenario. So it's not like task one will tell you a bit about one business and task two will read about another business. To all tasks seven are going to be on this one scenario. Uh, have you been on my AAT? Sure. Um, there are two sample assessments on there. Are you registered on AQ 2016? Yes, if you go on to the um, AAT e-learning, there are those are quite good stuff on there actually. There's some new um, introductory videos by tutors. There's some um, videos of key calculations, but there are two AAT sample assessments for each exam on there, including the Synoptic. Now, uh, it's a, as I mentioned, it's a two-hour exam, and just like the mandatory units exams, you can move from one question to another. So you've got seven tasks to do. You can go to from task one to task seven and vice versa. The reason why I mention that, because that's what you expect, at the advanced level or level three, you can't. You've got two halves, and once you're in the second half, you can't go back to the first. But in the foundation certificate uh, synoptic, you can, you can move around. So it's one big scenario, and you can go from one question to another. So like I say, there's going to be seven tasks. Uh, each task will cover a variety of units. So you will not get one task that's on bookkeeper controls, then another that's on um, bookkeeper transactions, and then another. it won't be like that. You'll have one task with a task at, you know, at least two, if not three different units. Yes, you are allowed retakes. Now, that's actually a good question because on AQ 2016, if you are 19 or under and you're in England and Wales and you're not an apprentice, you're only allowed two resit attempts in any two year period. Is anyone attending tonight under nine or 19 or under in terms of age? Right. Uh, in that case, then don't worry about resits. You can resit it. Uh, <laughs> You can resit it as many times as you like. It only affects a certain number of people, but it does affect them significantly. If you're over 19, don't worry about it. You can sit as many times as you like. Hopefully, you won't be sitting it more than once, but you can if you want. There's no resit restrictions. So, yeah, you've got the four units that are going to spread out over the seven tasks. So, you, you double entry, you might you really need to know it. You're going to need it again in the next level anyway. So, you know, you, you don't want to be forgetting it. Uh, book controls, journals are a really key subject. I, I don't see them not being in the exam. Um, and then elements of costing. And there's going to be bits like, can you explain elements of costing as well, as well as just calculating the figures? And then working effectively. The actual subject matter hasn't really changed from AQ 2013. So it's all about time management, people management, business structures, sustainability and ethics. But Again, you've got written questions, so it's going to be, can you explain these concepts as well as just can you, you know, match the right answer? So you've got seven tasks to do, covering four units, and you can move through them in any order. So written tasks. So this is something that will all be relatively new to yourself because um, you, you don't do this. Uh, I've never previously done it. With written class, um, task, you want to make it relevant. If it's not relevant to the scenario, if it's not relevant to the question, don't write it. You won't get any marks, it'll just take up your time. Now, crucially, pick up info from the scenario. The information in the scenario has been written for a reason, i.e. for you to use it. So if the information is there, it's going to be interesting to um, make a comment on it. Things Write enough. Now, it's one of those things you could write for England. There are only so many marks available in every task. So once you've hit the maximum number of marks, writing any more is not going to get you any more marks. It's just going to waste your time and you're going to lose marks elsewhere. So you need to be comfortable of what is expected. So if you do the 80 sample assessments or the mock exams from your training provider, 
you want well if you're doing from training provider your training provider should be telling you if um you are writing enough or you're writing too much good question no it could just be the question is just says state whether john can do this and if the answer is no you get one mark it will tell you how many marks are available for each question and the mark should be indicative of how much you need to write but you should be getting a feel for how much to write we're doing lots of practice exams the AAT sample assessments have got some good answers just to judge uh, length more than anything else all right so I, I mentioned previously about a state question the state question is can you do this and the answer is no you've got the mark that's all there is with an explain question if you write no you're going to get so few marks explain means you need to say no John can't do this and then explain why so you need to be writing an awful lot for an explain question and you need to be thinking about who is the reader for your answer so you, it's not a case of you're explaining this for the market you're explaining this to someone in the business who may or may not be an accountant so you need to explain them in terms that will be um, applicable to them and just think about the bigger picture so this is what we all we're trying to get at with this unit is that you are looking at all the units as a whole so if there is an issue so if you're explaining um something to do with cost behavior you need to start thinking about you know if we're producing lots and lots of this can we actually is, you know, is it going to affect the environment is it going to upset the staff if we're just asking them to work overtime and things like that so think of everything as a whole don't just think right that's what we, we learned elements of costing because there's going to be other aspects to it as well likewise impact and extent if something's happened and it's not particularly interesting don't write about it because it's not interesting if something really big and significant has happened you need to be spending your time writing about that if it, you know if it's a small change don't there's going to be something else that's far more important and like i say integrated when you write an answer you want to be looking for can i make a point drawn from elements of costing can i make a point drawn from process in bookkeeping transactions so for example if um there, there are errors in the accounting systems you need to think right a i need to correct the errors that comes back to bookkeeper controls and then you start thinking about um you know working effectively why was an error you know people not got enough time to do their work are people not qualified enough so try and bring you know all the units together and then p this is how you should attempt all questions is you've got to make a point if you haven't got a point to say anything don't say anything because you, you know it, it's not interesting so you've got to have a point to, to make you then got to explain your point so explain you know why it's interesting and then for top marks apply your point to the scenario so you've got to have something to say that's interesting say why it's interesting and say why it's relevant to the scenario it's the scenario that i cannot stress enough so they're the written tasks um the AAT synoptic exams are not on demand so you can't just sit them any time of the year like you can with the mandatory exams however for the case of foundation certificate it's mainly the case of when are they not available so basically the foundation synoptic exams are not available in the sort of first week of every month so from that period there for that one week there there isn't a synoptic window for the remaining three weeks or four weeks of the month depending on the month you can sit the synoptic exam it's far more readily available than the advanced or professional um, level synoptics which are once every six weeks so don't overly worry about the when you can or cannot sit the foundation synoptic because there's plenty of choice um in the found advanced and professional level synoptics i'm advising my students to, to book them quite far in advance because there's going to be a lot of demand for a very short window to sit the exam it's not so much of an issue at the foundation level so don't really worry about that and then these are the ones going into the sort of second half of the year again it follows the same thing that it's more often than not although um just remember no one will be sitting exam after the 17th of december this uh, year so don't worry too much about the synoptic windows for this level so tips for passing the synoptic window so during the two-hour assessment you'll be presented with a range of tasks some numerical some will be written 
be prepared that there will be written questions in every task and it could cover any subject. And crucially, and more often than not, you'll need to be able to explain financial information of a technical nature. So it might be um, stuff from wrong from booking transactions or bookkeeper controls, controls. And you need to explain it to non-accountants. So being able to explain concepts to people is an essential part of the conversation. This is meant to be the skills that you require in the workplace. So they're going to always, at some point in this exam, you will be asked to explain something to someone who is not an accountant. Now, as I say, you're encouraged to proceed to the tasks in the synoptic in the order presented. You may as well. You're going to have to do all seven tasks. If you don't want to do one task, the odds of you passing are very remote. But like I say, if you do have a, your mind goes blank, you can come back to a task uh, if you want to move on. There are no sort of limits in terms of uh, moving around the exam like there are at the um, advanced level. But I, I'm a big believer in, um, in terms of time management for an exam, you want to go to the first question, read the question very, very carefully, make sure you're clear what the question is asking and put your answer down, then move on. You'll be fine for time if you do that. If, however, you don't read the question carefully, you start putting an answer down, then you realise what you're writing is not really what the, the question is wanting. Then you have to go back and restart it. That's what kills you for time. So just read the question carefully, put your answer down once and move on. But yeah, you may as well just work through this exam in, um, in the order presented. It's, it's, it, there's nothing to be gained by move, you know, moving around, although that option is there. So how should you prepare for your synoptic assessment? So you've got to start studying working effectively. So once you've done that, then go back to the three core papers. You have to revise them because they could come up. Anything from those core papers could come up. So at that point there, you should be fairly up to exam speed for working effectively, bookkeeping transactions, bookkeeping controls and um, elements of costing. Now, that sounds like a big ask to be exam ready for four different units. On the advanced level, you've got to be exam ready for six different units. So it, it, it's only going to get worse. So in terms of preparation, do not expect the exam to be like the mock exams that are on the AT website or even that your training provider have given you. They're only indicative of the type of questions that can come up. There might be, you know, might have more tasks. Um, you know, there will only be seven tasks, but there might be more questions per task. The order in which they uh, different subjects come up can change. And whether it's a written numerical question or a written question for any subject can also change. So I strongly recommend you spend time working on as many exam type questions as you possibly can. And the other thing I should say is if you've got um, a tutor uh, with your pre studies, practice your written questions, especially because this is the first time you'll have come to that and get them to check them because it's very good that, you know, you do a numerical question. If you've written five and the model answers five, like, yes, I've got it right. You know that. It's, it's, you know, it's not rocket science. But you could write a written question and you look at the model answer and you think, mine's nothing like that. I won't get any marks. However, it might be the case of what you've written is actually quite good. It's just slightly different to what the model answers say. You'd still get lots of marks. Or it might be that you look and think, yeah, that's pretty good. And it's actually rubbish. Or it's just not enough. Or you've not gone into enough depth. So always get your written questions checked, if you can. I really strongly suggest that because they're quite subjective for you to sort of mark on your own. So that's how I suggest you sort of prepare for the synoptic assessment. You should, because you've got the window, you should have your exam booked and you know which window you're working towards. So does anyone have any questions about the synoptic exam at the foundation level or anything, in fact? I say this is a new thing for the AAT, um, but I mean, there's, there's, there's lots of people who've sat the foundation certificate now um, because you know, the foundation it, it, it is quite a shorter uh, qualification than the advanced and professional. So, you know, the feedback we get, we're getting is that the exams are reasonably straightforward, but they're very, very different to the mocks. You will never have an, eye, an, eye, an exact idea of the exam formats because the whole point is it could be anything you need to think on your feet. Um, we're getting feedback that the, the exams are you know, very different to the sample assessments, but 
you know, if you're well prepared, they're fairly straightforward. There's nothing really weird that comes up, but you can't expect certain things will be in certain places and certain things will be examined because that's not always the case. So it, our, you know, awareness of what will come up is, is not going to get any better as time goes on. Um, I mean, it, 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 we're not having any real issues with the foundation synoptic students getting through, but they've just been well prepared um, for it. That you know, it could be anything. Yes, uh, very good question, Rosa. Um The actual questions within each task are marked independently. So if you get a question wrong on um, elements of costing, and then you go to explain it, um, it doesn't matter, you'll still get the marks. So uh, I mean, even within one task, if you get a figure wrong and then use it correctly, um, you'll still get the marks, you get the own figure rule. So if, if you make a bit of a, you know, a mess of task one, and do very well on task two, seven, you, you will pass the exam. So don't feel that although, although it's all a one scenario, the questions are very on their own that in terms of marks. So if you have a bit of a rough question and do well on the rest, it's not going to hold you back. Yes, if you're getting good grades on the other ones, obviously your knowledge is very good. That knowledge is going to be tested again in the same way, but then obviously you've got the written questions. So um, you know, it will be indicative that, you know, on average, you will do better in the synoptic if you're doing better in the other exams. But obviously there's a difference between knowing how to calculate a, a number and being able to explain a concept. So you might be good at um, calculating variable, semi-variable and fixed costs, but you need also need to transfer that to being able to explain those concepts as well. So that there is a new element to the synoptic um, as well as just being able to, to do the questions. Has anyone else got any questions on this? Has anyone got the exam coming up soon? So there's, obviously there's synoptic windows for, for this going uh, on all the time. Not long then. Um, I mean, if, you, if you've done well on the other side, I'm quite happy that you'll do fine. But again, as much question practice as you possibly can. And if, if possible, get your um, um, written questions checked by someone um, because it, it is quite hard and you want someone to you know, spend the time. I mean, obviously, I have not marked lots and lots of uh, foundation synoptic mock exams yet because it's relatively new and people don't come around to it. But the skills, you know, that a tutor will have from from years of marking um, level four uh, written questions are transferable down to level two. So if you choose experience level four, that they, they, they will know what to look for in written questions. Now, if you're self-studying, I mean, you've got, I presume you've bought some materials. Um, you've got the 80 sample assessments. You just have to sort of do your best looking at um, your answers and the AT answers. And the other thing is, if your answer is not, you know, the same as the AT answers, don't think rubbish, just think, you know, is it sensible more than anything else? So if it asks you to come up with a suggested policy on something and they've done something that's different to what you've done, don't think yours is wrong. Think, you know, is it sensible? Is it applicable to the scenario? And if it is, and it's a sensible suggestion, applicable to the scenario, and you've explained it well, you'll get all the marks. Yes, you do get feedback for the exams. Uh, you'll get your usual feedback sheet, which tells you if you exceeded, you met, you were borderline, you did not meet the requirement, or you significantly were below the requirement for each task. And you'll actually get a actual mark now on AQ 2016. You don't get that on AQ 2013. So it will tell you if you got 75% or if you got 79% and you're one mark off getting a merit. So you will get feedback and you will um, get an overall grade. I mean, if you do have a burning question that comes up after the end of the webinar, uh, you can contact me at nickcrags at fi.co.uk. Um, 
I should say I'm the director of uh, distance learning at First Intuition uh, and teaching AT for a while. Um, no, Katrina, like I say, the, these are marked by the AAT. So you have to wait six weeks to get your results. And what will happen is you, your results will appear on your My AAT account, normally on a Thursday. So you log in six weeks after your exam on the next Thursday, you'll get your results. And then if you want the exceeded MET sheet, you need to go back to the exam center where you've sat your exams. So if you've got a training provider and you've sat your exams at a separate external exam center, the training provider can't get to it. You have to go back to the um, the uh, center where you've sat your exams. Uh, what I will do, I'll email everyone with a recording of this uh, webinar um, after after the event, uh, take me a day or so to get it across. But um, but yeah, I'll send everyone a recording of it. Is there anything else I can help with while you're here? No, appreciate it. I appreciate you for coming. Right, so unless... Ah, yes, there are other webinars. So we finished the ones for January because the synoptic window for the advanced and professional is uh, next week and the week after. If you check out our website, fi.co.uk, you can see that there are webinars that are very... Well, they're going to be the same slides, but obviously live um, in March. So to, just before the next synoptic window opens in um, in March, obviously, uh, for the advanced and professional level. So basically, they're driven by the advanced professional level because they're not on demand, whereas the foundation synoptics, they're all the time. So um, yeah, we, we didn't want to sort of do that. Um, yeah, I mean, when I say they're going to be the same slides, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you, I'm going to use the same structure. But if, if something new comes out, if we get a bit more knowledge or the AT change something, we would change it and would update it and you know, you know, we'd make it relevant. So yeah, if you if you want to register on the March ones, if you just pop an email over to aat at fi.co.uk and uh, let us know which level webinar you're interested in, I will uh, get someone to book you on and send you over an email nearer the time. Uh, we're not covering other units. The reason being, we tried that before, and AAT's distance learning students are stood in all units at all different levels. So, you know, I could run one on uh, financial statements because I like that. People could be stood in at any time of the year. With the synoptics, you know when people are going to be sitting, so you get a reasonably good attendance and make it sort of worthwhile. If you do check out our website, uh, there is recordings of um, webinars that we've done on various sort of key subjects like flex budgets, um, accruals and prepayments, and did one on tax. Um, also, there are, there are lots of free resources on our website. If you go to our blog, there's loads and loads of um, um, examples, questions, and lectures uh, on. There's lots on bookkeeper transactions, bookkeeper controls, lots on costing. Um, so there's lots of you know free resources on there. Um, so although we're not running a live webinar. Um, there are lots of recorded stuff on there. And also check out our YouTube channel. There's lots of stuff on there as well. Cool. Has anyone else got any other questions or anything before I go? Right, unless someone starts typing in the next 10 seconds, I'm going to say thank you for attending. I appreciate it. Um, really do. If you do have any questions that come back later, again, like I say, uh, contact me at nickcragsfi.co.uk and I will send over a recording of this to you before, hopefully before the next day or so, um, so you can go over it again. Lovely. Right. I appreciate you all coming. And like I say, any problems, questions or queries, you know where I am. Have a good night.